When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about some of the sources of air pollution and the consequences of air pollution. What we're going to do in this video is cover the next dot point, which is a quite short dot point in terms of the actual dot point itself. All it says is define the Chatier's principle. And define means we need to know just what it is. We need to be able to define it. And before we start to talk about Le Chatier's principle, I want to go over two different types of reaction. So I'll talk about the reaction that goes to completion and compare that to a reaction that is reversible. So the, most of the actual reactions that we've encountered so far are reactions that go to completion. What I mean by that is, for example, if magnesium, which is obviously a metal, so you can imagine you have a magnesium strip and you burn that in the presence of oxygen. So this is magnesium and oxygen reacting together to form magnesium oxide, which is a powder, which is powder right here. And you've never probably seen magnesium powder go back into metal itself. It's so just a one-way thing. If once you burn magnesium, it's a powder and it stays a powder. It can't go backwards. It doesn't go back into metal itself. So that's the one that goes to completion. It's just a one-way. There's no backwards reaction. Whereas if you have a reaction which is reversible, you have a forward and a backward reaction. Or a, we call it a reverse reaction. So for example, if you have carbon dioxide and you add carbon dioxide gas under high pressure into water, what happens is, is you get that carbonic acid, carbonic acid. If you, for example, have coke, and you have coke in a bottle, most of the coke, quite a bit of it will be carbonic acid. But once you actually open that bottle, what happens is that carbonic acid dissociates or, or breaks into parts. And what actually breaks into is carbon dioxide and water. So here we had first, to make carbonic acid, we had carbon dioxide under high pressure, and we had carbon dioxide react with water to form it. But then once we opened the actual bottle, it went backwards and created carbon dioxide again in water. So that was a reverse reaction. And the way you know that happens is if you look at actual coke before you open the bottle, it's not going to be any, there's no fizz, you can't see any fizz happening because all of it is carbonic acid. But once you actually open it, what happens is you see all that fizz coming, and fizz itself is carbon dioxide. Because once you've opened the bottle, you've made that reverse reaction happen. And this reverse reaction creates carbon dioxide again. But we'll go over this in much more detail in a future video. But this is just to show you the difference between a reverse reaction and a one that goes to completion. Reverse reaction can both go forward and reverse. And you need to know that because when it comes to equilibrium, so that's very important for understanding the Chatier's principle, equilibrium is the idea that you have reactants and products. Remember, reactants and products are just the things that when you have reactants coming together, they form products. So what you can imagine, if you theoretically had a very simplified idea of having four reactants here and four products here, and you reach your equilibrium, what that means is you're going to have stay the same, and there's going to be no overall change. What, what can happen, because this is actually a dynamic equilibrium, what can happen is, for example, a reactant can turn into a product. So this can go over to the other side. But once this happens, to remain in equilibrium, what has to happen, a product has to come over and change to the other side. So overall, even though there's things moving, there's no change, because if one moves to the other side, so if a reactant becomes a product, then a product has to go to the other side to become a reactant again. So there's a constant move. There is a movement, but the movement is equal. So this is for equilibrium to occur. This is what we need to know for equilibrium. For an equilibrium to occur, we need to have the following conditions. We need to have a closed system. So for example, we talked about that bottle, the Coke bottle. When the actual cap is on, the system is closed, so we can reach equilibrium. But once we open the cap, then it's not a closed system anymore. So when we have a cap on the bottle, we have a closed system. We need to have constant macro properties. And what I mean by that is, for example, gas pressure has to be kept constant. Color has to be kept constant. And things like temperature as well. So for example, if, if the color were to change in, let's say, the Coke bottle, that would mean that the actual reactant's product, something has changed because the color comes from the actual inside molecules. So if the color is constant, that means probably the actual reaction is constant as well. 
right? So if the color changes, that means something has changed. The ratio has changed somehow. Also, we need to make sure that the concentration of reactants and products are kept the same. And with this, for example, the ratio here is one to one. So for every reactant, we have one product. It doesn't have to be one to one. It could be, you know, for every five reactants, we have one product. But the important part is that it's kept constant. So, for example, if we were to, if we have this ratio five to one, and we add one more product, then you have to have five more re reactants to keep it constant. So, whatever the ratio is, it has to be kept constant. And the forward and the reverse reactions are equal. So, as soon as, in terms of speed, so as I mentioned earlier, this there is not, it's not static. So, this is the the, the, the word dynamic is important, dynamic equilibrium. Because what that means is you have a constant movement of molecules from reactants to products, but also from products to reactants. But the important part is that they're at the same speed. Pretty much as soon as one goes over to the other side, a product becomes a reactant again as well. So these are the four parts that we need to have to have an equilibrium present. We need to have a closed system. We need to keep the constant macro properties such as gas, pressure, color, and temperature. We need to have concentration of our reactants and products need to be the same or kept the same. They kept the same, not to have to, they don't have to be the same, they have to be kept the same. So for example, if we have a one-to-one -one ratio, it has to be kept at one to one. If it's a five to one ratio, it has to be kept at five to one. And also the forward and the reverse reactions have to be at equal speed. So if one reactant turns in product, then the same speed the product has to be returned back into reactant as well. So it's kept overall it's kept constant. So these are the four points. But what this La Chatier's principle is saying, so this is where the Le Chatier's principle is coming into play. What he's saying is that a system will be kept at equilibrium even if there's a disturbance. So disturbance means that there's a change. So for example, if we were to change the temperature or the pressure or the concentration, the equilibrium will adjust. So the equilibrium adjusts to disturbance to make sure that overall nothing much happens. So everything's kept the same. So for example, if I, we'll look at just at the change in concentration example for this video. We'll go over the other ones in the next videos. But let's say we want to have a ratio, so I'll just rub all this out. Let's say we want to have keep a ratio of that one to one which is the original one. So our products and our reactants are kept at a one-to-one -one ratio. It doesn't have to be always at one-to-one -one ratio, but let's say this for simplicity, we'll say one-to-one. -one. So what happens if we were to add more concentrations? So at the moment it's one-to-one. -one. Let's say we add two products. So now we have not a one-to-one -one ratio anymore. Now it's actually a one for every one reactant, we have 1.5 products. But the equilibrium doesn't want this, it wants to have a one-to-one -one ratio. So what happens is one of these will go over the other side. So the equilibrium makes sure that things change. So this will go over the other side. Once it does that, you're going to have five reactants and five products, which means now we have a one-to-one -one ratio again. Right? So five here, five here, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. So we've gotten back to a one-to-one -one ratio. This is the example of what happens when we change our concentrations, what happens when it comes to reactions. These reactions will go ahead just to make sure that the, the actual ratio stays the same. And this is what Le Chatier's principle is all about. It's talking about equilibrium and what happens if we change any of these factors. If we change temperature, we change pressure and change concentrations, what happens to the equilibrium and what happens to these reactions to make sure everything is kept constant. And we'll talk more about that in the next couple of videos, but this was just a quick introduction. I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching.